Right, testing, testing, one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Check out my glue. Well, if you keep liking the videos and retweeting them, they're going to keep sending me out here. I'm stranded in Gallant Shields. I'm actually outside the academy here at Scott Park. Scottish Borders Council this morning has confirmed that all schools in the borders will remain closed on Friday for a third day. Uh, we're expecting the same announcement from Borders College as well. It comes as the Met Office extends its amber weather warning, which was due to come to an end at 6 o'clock tonight. It's extended that until 10 o'clock on Friday. Well, we were warned. I read... Weather warning still in force for the northern borders, at least this morning, until 10 o'clock. Although, if you're waking up in many parts of the borders, you could be forgiven for thinking the red warning was in place where you are as well. I'm keen to carry out a little social media experiment this morning by trying to invite as many as you as possible to join in. We want to come live to your living rooms to find out what the weather's like where you are. It looks beautiful, it looks beautiful. And... I think Oliver's venturing as far as all of us should dare to venture today, which is the window of the house, and just admire from within and uh, in the warmth. Um, so, Oliver, that's fantastic. A little insight there. OK, well done. If you survive this week in the borders, your reward is it's a beautiful day today. Ideal weather for sledging. But just take it very carefully if you're heading out and about this morning because the roads and many pavements are treacherous. Hearing reports of cars sliding on roads all over the region. We're not expecting any more bad weather. This, however, looks like it'll be the last day we're going to be able to enjoy the snow. So there's only one safe way to get out and about this morning. Well, it may not seem like it right now with the snow-covered hills behind me, but St Mary's Lock's a summer hotspot for visitors, including wild campers. But the worry is not everyone leaves the beauty spot as they found it, with reports of fences being chopped down for firewood and piles of rubbish littering the roadside. But now the community council's trialling a new warden service to cut down on loutish behaviour. I caught up with community councillor Gordon Harrison to find out more. Uh, people have parked cars in places where um, we would expect uh, flooding to occur, but uh, because we're just about peaking here, I think uh, we're just about at the top. The radio borders cars just across here as well. We'll, we'll, not, we'll not leave it for too long, but what's the real worry that could happen here? Um, well, a couple of years ago, the whole of this uh, area um, disappeared underwater. Good morning from Scottish Borders Council headquarters in Newtown St Boswells as counting gets underway in the Selkirkshire by-election. Seven candidates are contesting the seat. Trevor Adams for the Conservatives, Jack Clark for the Lib Dems, Kenneth Gunn and Carolyn Penman both as independents, Barbara Harvey for the Scottish Green Party, John Mitchell for the SNP and Scott Redpath for Labour. We'll bring you all that. <laughs> we'll bring you all the action. It's not a bloody football match. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, learning to ride the horse. Obviously, yeah. the Melrose ride out on the Monday night is uh, one of the highlights of the festival week. But uh, you've just had the one lesson. So yeah, I've always went down to watch the the ride outs, and but I've just never really got involved myself. I had one lesson down the borders um, and up in Aberdeen where I study. I've got some uh, less intense lessons lined up, so hopefully smash those. And uh, before I know, I'll be you know your next cowboy. <laughs> It's obvious from the horse behind me that we're in Hoyt today. We're asking people for their views on the common riding's decision to allow ladies to take part in more events this year. And I've got a couple of people with me now to give us uh, their views. What's your name, first of all? Jimmy McDonald. Jimmy McDonald. And, and you've got close connections with the common riding. Tell us about Not those. Close connections. My granny, years ago, she used to, when they came down to the mayor, they stopped that house and they take out what they call the stirrup cup to the corner and the gentlemen and the horses. Yeah. It was always, there was a lot of family came from all over the country, it was a more meeting place. Yeah. They all came for the, for the Comorine. But I think in this day and age, 
We've got the ladies falling now and I think they should be allowed to do more and get into more things. What difference do you think they'll make this year? I'm not really sure, but when you see the ladies, they're always well turned out. And I'm going to get a row for saying this. Most of them are better horse riders than the men. <laughs> Controversial. But for people who don't know much about Hoyt Common Riding then, just explain how much it means to the town. It means very, very much. Because uh, so you're young when you go to the school, you got taught all the songs and you enjoyed them. You go up the mare and you your friends and everything. And if it's nice, a good day, it's okay. And uh, it's just a day out. It's changed a wee bit nowadays. But the spirit's still there. When the people come, you meet people you hadn't seen for a while. You bump into people and you say, oh, so so. And it's very good. But I think the ladies, especially... The horse riders, the young ladies, are very, very good. They're always very smart, and they ride well on the horses. Yeah. And I think some of the things they should let them do more. OK, and does this mean you're going to be digging out your jodpurs this year? No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs>